Hi and welcome to Driving the Frontier. I've been reading on a few forums um, over the last couple of weeks that uh, a few people have had problems with um, the ID media that's fitted into the pilot as standard. And various people have been saying that they have struggled with the um, set up um, uh, use of the uh, sat nav and also other features such as dab and radio so i wanted to uh, put together a short video which uh, details what we found out about it uh, the pros and cons now some people uh, always have their mobile phone with them um, so they may want to plug their mobile phone into this system and use google maps on android auto uh, or you may have an iPhone and you want to do exactly the same thing. Um, it might be that you have an old phone. Um, this one is um, uh, an Android S6. Um, it's running an older version of Android. It's not getting updated, but you could repurpose this um, as your sat-nav system. Now, this particular ID media does not actually have navigation built in and for some people that is a disadvantage for other people it's great because you get the updates on your mobile phone on Google it's always up to date you don't have to buy and install any um, navigation updates uh, if you had a standalone um, sat nav such as this one that we we have used previously apologies if you can hear the traffic behind me. I'm actually parked near a busy road uh, which is not ideal for making a video um, so um, with this particular one you have to download the um, the updates for the sat nav um, you're tied into whatever um, data that you can get from from the supplier uh, obviously using this one uh, as an alternative you can you can obviously get the updates through Google and it just stays completely up to date the only other thing to consider is that this is a standalone system which is designed for motorhomes um, and obviously coming through your mobile phone you're just getting the standard um, Google Maps data uh, which you would get if you were driving the car so you have to be mindful of that when you come to uh, to be driving and, and, and take take precautions that you're not going to be taken down a um, a lane that you perhaps can't um, can't get out of so I'll show you how to connect this I'll I'll tell you how we've done it uh, people may do it in a completely different way um, but I'll, I'll let you know how we've done this and, um, and and how it operates for us and we found that it's um, it's pretty fine in in many respects there have been a few um, uh, comments with regard to the dab and the radio not working now um, that really depends on whether there is a loose connection inherently uh, with the the dab aerial on the, on the roof or with the radio aerial which is fitted um, on ours on the uh, on the a post here so consequently um, if there is a, any any uh, disconnection with that you're not going to get a signal no matter how much you program it in so this could be a bit tricky to film with the uh, reflection so I hope you'll bear with me uh, but the first thing to do before you connect your Android device or your Apple device is to make sure that the Z-Link software is actually connecting properly okay so if you go back to the main screen not quite sure what the best angle for this will be I think that is probably better for you and you click on the four squares in the bottom left hand corner you'll see that the Z-Link software is there there's little point in clicking on that it doesn't do anything it's just an app so the best thing to do is to go on to settings and scroll up now I know you can't really see this very well but there is a setting in here that says car settings and if you click on car settings and then click on Navi application application right down at the bottom is the z-link there's other applications on there um, which won't connect to your mobile phone but there is the z-link and just make sure that it is actually ticked on the right hand side there or, or the, the, the button is actually showing okay so you can then come back out of this to the home screen and there you've got your um, navigation in the middle 
So what I need to do now is to grab my mobile phone in my other hand. It's handy to have a photographer on these and um, connect in the mobile phone using the USB. So I'm just about to plug this into the bottom of the USB or bottom of the phone there. Okay. And um, the phone is is actually trying to connect to auto. So we'll just make sure that it's unlocked. Okay. And the phone is unlocked now. And there we have the software on the screen. Okay. So you, you can see there mobile phone's gone gone off to sleep mode. I can put the mobile phone away somewhere now, probably back in that um in, in that um, area there store it away because I don't need to actually have that in my hand and just trying to get you a better picture on there so uh, it's come up with a few places that we've been to before so if I click on one of them head south on ASIC basically whatever settings you've got in in Google um, on, on your mobile phone will actually replicate on this screen so if press the home button back down here again uh, we can go into uh, the radio so I've got the volume turned down because um, obviously for um, copyright um, reasons so if you look at the radio there if you want to do a search and I've, I've said that you've got to make sure that your aerials are connected properly. Um, obviously the dealer or, or the supplier will be able to check that for you because that's fundamental. If the aerials are not connected for either the uh, the radio, um, the FM radio or the DAB, you're not going to get anything at all. So we do an auto search there and that will search through all the different um, channels that are available. If you're just wanting local um, news coming through, you can select it onto local. Uh, there's a button here to uh, change the equaliser if you want to change all that kind of thing. Let's go back into the radio again. Um, and then obviously it brings up some save tabs on here. So we've got Radio 2, BBC Scotland, Borders. Um, it, it's currently saving them automatically in there for you. So those are the ones that are going to be available uh, in, in the area that you're in so that's whizzing through and we've not had a problem with the radio whatsoever it, it works perfectly well I have heard that people have had problems with it it might be that your external aerial um, is not connected properly or there is a, a there is a, a wire missing or something of that nature but we've really not had a problem with it okay so when you go back on the home button if the radio was playing it will continue to still play um, so you, you can listen to it in, in, in the background there while you're operating other things. If we go on to DAB, obviously DAB, a digital radio, is only available in areas where the signal is transmitted. Okay, And that's not every, every place in the country. Uh, so if you want to do a, a search on that one to get all the channels in that are currently available, just click on the little search magnifying glass and it will scan. Now it's usually better to do this whilst you are stationary because if you're moving around you might actually get into an area where there is no signal and as a result it will just not find anything. Um, so you're better off while you're stationary using the DAB. Um, once you're on the move it should then automatically seek um, the, the, the same channel from a different transmitter. Okay so it's going through the process of doing that. We're up at 29%. Um, I don't know how clear you can see that. But similarly, when you get the channel stored, they come up in tabs on the bottom here. So you can just click on them accordingly. Now again, you've got to have your DAB aerial connected properly. So we have a DAB aerial on the roof and our FM ra uh, radio aerial is actually on the B post, just out, just outside here on the B post, on the, on the A post rather of the vehicle. So there we do go. Um, that seems to have found quite a few um, radio stations. So, uh, for example, if we want to listen to one of them, and again, I've got the volume turned down, you just simply click on it and you're straight in.
and um, uh, and and we've not found any problems with that whatsoever. We obviously do um, commiserate with anybody that's had had an issue with this particular device, but for us it seems to be working perfectly well. Um, so if we come out of that. Uh, we've got the Bluetooth connection and also the rear camera, which is normally connected to um, the, the, the 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 reversing camera whilst we're driving along, so we can actually see what's happening behind the vehicle all of the time. But the ignition needs to be turned on for that. This unit here does not pick up a GPS signal. Okay, so it there's no GPS working in this unit. Your GPS comes from your mobile phone, just as it would as if you were using Google Maps or, or a similar application on your Google phone. So what happens when your phone disconnects? So if you disconnect your phone, you're getting out of your vehicle, you're taking it with you, um, you'll find out that when you come back in again, you um, switch on the ID media and it'll be waiting for you to connect your phone. So you connect your phone back in again, uh, there we go and it does take a short while it, it, it sometimes takes a couple of seconds sometimes it takes about 15 20 uh, but it's um, obviously communicating with the phone and it's saying right okay um, we need to open the the application and there we go so that was about 15 or 20 seconds I think uh, it's pretty quick uh, but once you're driving along and you've got it connected it just stays connected um, unless unless you disconnect it so uh, let's have a look at that again just plug it back in again waiting to connect and we're back again on the maps there we go back to Newcastle and obviously it will continue the route that you've been using previously. So for us this system works really well. Um, I'm sorry to hear that quite a few people have had issues with it um, but you know we have this standalone system which we've used previously and we've had problems with that. Um, not every device works as you want it to do all of the time. It's electronics after all. So, um, you know, sometimes things don't connect, they just need to be reconnected again. But for us, this works perfectly well. Um, the, the graphical display obviously will date over a period of time when new devices come out, um, but it is quite easy to access the, the, different, um, the different settings on it. Um, and, and for us we're, we're reasonably happy with it. So to conclude if anybody has any problems um, and they want to ask some questions I will definitely uh, try and answer those based on the experience that we've had. Um, so if you want to leave any comments um, I look forward to hearing those. But in the meantime uh, thanks for watching and bye bye for now.